My wife and I woke up this morning to find our heater was blowing cold air. Uh, it's winter outside. It's very cold. Let me uh, take a look at it and see if I can see what's wrong with this thing. With this particular uh, heating unit, this has a little red indicator light in the front here. And depending on what it's flashing on the LED, you can decode it by codes that are actually on the inside cover of this unit. So let's see what this code means. Well, the first thing I want to do is to shut the power off to the unit. I don't want to be uh, playing around and, and risking doing any more damage than I already have. So when I first came down, the unit was blowing. Uh, I turned the thermostat all the way down. The thermostat was set at 68 degrees, but yet uh, the temperature in the house was at 62. The temperature is dropping pretty quick. So when I turned the thermostat down, the blower motor shut off. And when I turned it back on, it came on. The blower motor came on again but it was still blowing cold air. So when I came down, it was obvious that it wasn't lighting. So there's something inside the lighting unit. And the code, since the code is, is flickering, we'll look at what codes is on the inside cover. And according to this, if it's flashing slowly, it's at normal settings. If it's flashing quickly, then it is at call for heat. So that's not a good indicator. It shouldn't be flashing normal. It should be flashing in different flashes. Um, if it flashes in intervals of two flashes, then a pause, or eight flashes and a pause, then that will tell me what the issue is. But since I'm getting a normal no call for heat then that's telling me that uh, there's there's something more than meets the eye so I'm going to turn the power back on and see if I can get it through some different cycles that might make sense as to uh, deciphering what the problem is. I'll need to run and check the thermostat. I'll have to turn the thermostat up to get it to cycle on again. Okay, so this time when I cycled the power back on, I'm getting nine quick flashes and a pause. So I just needed to shut it down for a minute to get it to reset itself. And uh, once it reset itself, the internal computer system is telling me that the lighting mechanism is not functioning correctly. So whether the, uh, the igniter is bad or whether it's blown a fuse, there's uh, a few different things. Um, in my unit, I have a pouch here on the side that should have all the instructions, but the previous owner obviously has done something with that and it's not here. So it's going to make it a little more difficult to uh, decipher what's wrong without having those books. But uh, I've played with my unit in my last house. It broke on me constantly. So I have a fairly good idea where to start and we'll start with the igniter. The igniter for this unit is behind this panel. A lot of units don't have this sealed panel, but this is a, a higher end unit that uh, the, the train has um, closed this area off to lower the risk of any ignition system. But it's a good 
thing to think about um, to not have anything in this area that could be heat sensitive. Um, you don't want to be storing any gasoline or, or anything that way. Most people know that, but uh, it doesn't hurt to remind everyone that we want to make sure there's nothing here that can catch fire. Okay, the igniter unit in this, or the igniter itself in this unit, is, is connected right here. So we'll remove that and inspect it. It just has one, one screw that holds it in, and then it has this little squeeze connector discontinue it. When they get burnt they'll get a lot of um, residue pickup on the post. Uh, my prior unit had a coil here and my coil had burned through on that one. Uh, this isn't showing any signs of damage but these will burn out inside of this unit. So the best way to test it is to use uh, an ohm tester or a voltmeter of some sort to see if there's any continuity that was flowing through these two wires. Uh, another thing to test is to test these two leads here um, and see what kind of voltage is coming out or if there is any voltage in this on igniting. So let me check that. <laughs> Okay, now if I switch this to 110, actually switches to 250, when it cycles on, it should show me a voltage draw. So I will go turn that on now, and we'll see if there's any movement in this igniter. So let me go turn on the thermostat. Okay, when I uh, flipped on the thermostat and turned on the power, I was getting about 80 volts and I searched online and this actually does push 80 volts to the igniter. So I know the power is getting to the igniter. So then that is definitely leading me to be suspicious of the igniter itself. I called train to find out who sells parts in my area for this unit. And they gave me the name of a company called Airflow. Uh, and they gave me the phone number. I called them and they can actually test this for me. So they said, bring it down and they should have the part. They carry uh, a pretty good um, inventory of train parts. So I'm gonna head to the store and see if they have this part in hand, if, if this definitely is not functioning correctly. Okay, sure enough, the, uh, the igniter was bad. They put it on their tester and it didn't have any continuity. So uh, that was the culprit, we hope. We hope there's nothing else here, but all indicators are that it's just the igniter. Uh, one of the service technicians was there, really nice gentleman. He told me that whenever we're replacing a igniter, there's a pretty good chance that it's burning out because the flame indicator is dirty and it's sending um, poor signals that will burn out the igniter. So one of the things he told me to do, on the opposite side of where the igniter is, there is a flame sensor. 
And he said, take that out. Don't use sandpaper. Use a uh, Scotch-Brite pad to clean it. And there's the flame sensor there. It does have some residue on it. It's not bad. Let me get a uh, Scotch-Brite pad. And just take a Scotch-Brite pad and just gently clean off that, that steel rod. And that should be all it needs. I'll put the igniter back in. Okay, now that the igniter's back in and I have the flame sensor reinstalled, If I turn this unit back on, it should give us the LED indicator. And we do have a steady flash, which is telling us that it's in normal call for heat mode. So once I uh, turn on the thermostat and give it call to heat, we should see that igniter heat up. So let me get this lower panel back on. And I will turn on the thermostat. Just to play it safe, I don't want to have any flashback come out of this area. There, it shouldn't. Uh, it's designed to not do that, but when I'm during, Having problems with a furnace, you gotta plan for the worst. And, uh, if I did have a major flashback in this panel, it would blow this door off anyway. But I wanna make sure you have things as safe as possible. You wanna work smart. Okay, my unit is on now. I'm getting my uh, flashing light. The uh, call for heat indicator on the LED light is, is flashing slowly like it should be. Um, now I just need to turn on my thermostat. And uh, while I run up and turn on that thermostat, there should be a flash of light inside that little window at the top, if all goes as planned. And that is our indicator. And that is our igniter glow, and there is the blue flame. Exciting! Now you have heat. Now one thing that I didn't mention that you need to really give thought to whenever you're working on a heating unit. I'm not a professional. I'm a do-it-yourselfer. I've been doing these kind of things for many many years but know the surroundings too smell for gas this the unit the gas was turned on to this unit I didn't turn it off if there is any odor whatsoever of any fuel shut everything down and get a professional in to look at your your fuel lines you probably have a leak somewhere in the system 
and it's just not worth taking any risk of catching on fire or blowing up an area. Mine, uh, it, <laughs> this unit is just off of my garage um, underneath my, my house, so it would be catastrophic if I was to have a fire start in this room. But sniff test was the best indicator for me. Uh, luckily, propane has a pretty strong odor. But uh, it's running now. The, the uh, circulating fan has come on. I've got heat going to the house. So as the uh, Weasley twins so uh, proudly say, mischief managed. Okay, luckily I was able to make the repairs myself. I'm sure I saved myself at least a hundred dollars for a service repair call. Um, the part was ninety-six dollars, so that was uh, a little more than I expected. I pulled them up online, and they're right around forty-five, fifty dollars. So yeah, I was charged a little extra, but to be able to get it finished <laughs> and uh, running again within oh, probably about an hour and a half. Uh, yeah, it, it was worth the extra 50 bucks. And if I would have ordered online, of course, it would have taken a few days to get here. But uh, it's fixed, and like I say, I probably saved at least $100 for the service call. They most likely would have charged me a couple hundred dollars for the part, if they were honest. A um, couple of doors down, I was just talking to him when I went out to the mailbox, and he had a similar repair done on his, and he felt lucky it only cost him 800 bucks. Uh, I didn't have the heart to tell him <laughs> what what I paid to have mine fixed, but um, they forced him into a lot of parts that most likely weren't necessary. So it's one of those things. Maybe they needed it, maybe it didn't. But uh, I'm <laughs> I'm getting to the point where I don't trust a lot of service people. It's sad, but uh, that's what's happening in our economy and in our world. But, Get out there and fix it. You can do it. Uh, there's a lot of videos online to, to walk through these kinds of repairs. Hopefully this will uh, help somebody. Uh, maybe they can save a little bit of money. Maybe they can learn to do it themselves and uh, take some pride in their work. So be safe. Take care.